worship at Resurrection Lutheran Church, and we are glad that you can be with us this day. Today, our text reminds us that our God is a God of promise and blessing, but also a God who understands suffering and even death. What, a, what an amazing God it is that we believe in, the God that we trust, a God who knows that human experience and is still God. So today, as is our pattern, uh, we will be sharing communion. So if you need to pause the video and go get some bread and cup, um, we would encourage you to do that at this time as well. Each week during the season, we have been um, sharing our welcome statement. It is a way for us to be reminded both of what God promises and gives to us, but also what God calls forth from us. So together, let us do our welcome statement. We believe God loves everyone. As disciples of Jesus, we actively seek to live life in fellowship with the beautiful spectrum of diversity made manifest in the body of Christ. As Lutheran Christians, we respond in faith to the grace God first extends to us. This grace extends to all of God's creation. We recognize that many have not experienced God's all-encompassing welcome from the established church. We specifically welcome all people, including those of all races, ethnicities, gender and sexual orientations, ages, economic levels, and abilities. We invite you to join us as together we seek to respond in faith as God's hands and feet in the world. This is Resurrection's welcome statement. Father, 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of our, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello. Today's reading is from uh, the 17th chapter of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make, you, it will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you 
and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Word of God, Word of Life. Psalm 22. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. And I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. 
and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Word of God, word of life. to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God.
And you have to, I, I wonder, what is it that God wants, what he even needs to accomplish with this suffering? Taking up the cross, losing one's life, so others can live and be saved for the sake of the gospel. My question is then, then, and this is where, it, for me, it gets confusing, then what is this good news? You know, we've been talking about the good news for weeks now. What is this good news that happens because in the midst of suffering? I think it's this. Jesus proves his humanity because he suffers and dies. Jesus is like us in this. Suffering and death is that common thread, no matter what our status, position, or who we are, or what we'll ever become. Suffering and death is the thread that moves through all of humanity. Jesus suffers not because God demands su um, some suffering and death to make up for all of our sins. That's not what, the, what God, Jesus' suffering is about. Because Jesus comes proclaiming a loving God whose intention is to save, to redeem not just humanity, but all creation. Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection is that which brings peace between humanity and God. The place where I think this is most clear in Scripture is Romans chapter 5. And the beginning starts of that chapter starts this way. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our heart hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. What I find powerful in the statement, it begins in hope and ends in hope. And because of that, I think what we need to understand is that our suffering, God's suffering, Jesus' suffering, always moves from hope to hope. And there's somehow another that becomes part of what it means to follow Jesus Christ, which he speaks of in the gospel today. How do we go about following Jesus Christ? So if we have peace with God and access to grace through Jesus Christ, but even more than that, we can use our own deep human experience of suffering, of grieving, to lead us into a pattern that allows us to really follow Jesus. Hope of sharing in God's glory. Hope that in the midst of our suffering, character is produced, endurance is produced first, and then character. And how to character comes that thing that grows in us that even in the midst of life and its struggles, we find hope. Because God's love has already been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And here is how this connects with our two other readings, one from Genesis and one from Psalms. 
this covenant that God makes, this love covenant that God makes through Jesus Christ, the one in which we find grace, doesn't remembers the forgotten, those who feel left behind, the poor, the marginalized. Our psalmist reminds me us of that. And for all humanity, that's what the psalmist says, for all humanity, all that sleep, even the dead, even the unborn, all who suffer are the one that God saves. That's the covenant that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us pray. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to the baptized and all those seeking faith and grace in their lives, that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give to all people the joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From the galaxies to the microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You rule over the nations, raise up 
advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities that we can't even imagine. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. And we pray for Josh Armstrong, Jan Bachman, Hilary Benson, Caitlin Brooks, Dee Campbell, Bruce and Becky Carey, John and Pastor Christine Kaur, Denise Downing, Yvonne Edmonds, Jeff Ellers, Tori Inglebaum, Sarah Brupke, Harry Griffin and family, Corey Gustafson, Barbara and Mark Harding, Carol Helfrey, Ed Hyman, Cindy Holden, Jerry Hubert, Marcy Humphrey, Colin Keyes, Arthur LeBrant, Sally Lawrenson, Carolyn McCall, Don and Kathy Ogard, Jim Ostry, Ruth Porter, Mary Summer, Tiffany Tang, Susan Trout, Shirley Wagner, Sylvia Weaver, Judy Wheeler, Ann Weissen, Judy Yuff, and Joey Yuff. And we pray for our shut-ins this day, for Jan and Dean Bakken, for Russ Carlson, Pat Cross, Dorothy Denning, Yvonne Edmonds, Thelma Erlinson, Jerry and Jerry Hubert, Lorna Kershaw, Gordon Knott, Millie Mudge, Pat Paul, Helen Peterson, and Elmo Whitney. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, foster parents, and children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have, have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Let's, let's just pause and think of all the children that are in need around us at this time. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy God, we pray for this congregation. In the midst of transition and call processes, as we move forward in faith, that you are guiding us in this call process and strengthening those who are making the decisions on behalf of this congregation. We lift up the pastor, our new pastor, whom we do not know yet, but we pray for them, whomever he or she may be. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Share that peace with one another, and with those who can't be with you, pray for them in peace. Grace of wheat was scattered on the hill, were gathered into one.
My Lord of light, who made the worlds, in wisdom you have spoken. But those who heard your wise commands, your holy law have broken. sinner's death enduring for us you wore a crown of thorns a crown of life securing my lord of life who came in fire when Christ was high ascended your burning Days of fear are ended. Send us in the power of your Spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that it has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Praise to you.
uh, email that we send out on Tuesday mornings. And so, or you can call the office and get that information directly. A um, couple other things uh, going on. It, guess what? It's getting to spring. Um, if you're interested in using one of the common spaces over in the, the garden space behind the parsonage and just over the fence from the um, parking lot, um, we have space available and uh, you don't have to do a whole lot of work. Uh, the gardens are about three and a half feet wide and they're about 10 feet long. Um, this is just an opportunity that if you want to get um, a little dirt uh, under your fingernails or on your gloves, um, you can have a plot that's all yours. You can plant whatever you want there. So just be aware of that. Guess what? It's also spring and the weeds are coming up around the church property. And so if you would be willing to take, hey, I, I can take this section or I can help come on one day a month or something like that. Um, we need some help with that. And it's an ongoing challenge. We have a lot of grounds to cover. Um, if you are open to doing some weeding, call, just give a call to the office, let us know you're coming and we'll give you some suggestions on where might be a good place to, to help us out with. So please consider that as well. Bible study happens on Wednesdays at 11. We are um, studying the book of Revelation. We've had one session, but jumping in is, is just fine. We're, this week we're going to be covering chapters 2 and 3 in the book of Revelation. If you have time, you can read and follow up with that. But also remember the Bible study is always online. We try to post it by 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening. So if you have an opportunity to, um, that, to participate in that way, please do so. And let us know that you're doing so. It's, it's always good to know who's connecting in. High Tea and Happy Hour. Um, We've uh, been in conversation about, we kind of picked the topic. So last Thursday, um, that topic is, is, will be coming up. Um, also, what we're going to talk about this next week is we're going to talk about how do we welcome our new pastor? What should we be thinking about now? How do we prepare to welcome that new pastor um, as a congregation? Um, just a conversation. Join us on Zoom. Uh, you'll be getting that email on Tuesday morning. Let's see. Um, I think those are all the announcements at this time. Um, so, um, receive God's blessing. You are what God made you to be. Created in Jesus Christ for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Great to have you with us this week. Be a blessing. Amen.
And burn.